Patch 8.2.5 revealed. Big new features for WoW's future. Boys' policy backfire, plus we're hiring. Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. Well, against okay. all odds, I survived PreachCon and right as I arrived home, Blizzard announced the patch 8.2.5 PTR development exciting. notes, giving us a lot to talk about. Yep. I've also got another exciting bit of news. We're hiring. We are Ooh. hiring a writer slash researcher for our game industry Ooh. news channel. So Ooh. if you're interested about that? in that, check out the link down below. We are interested in both local and remote positions. Uh, really, it's about finding the right person. So check bellular.com forward slash jobs. We don't have okay. a Warcraft role just yet, but that's something that probably will change soon. And then not to overburden you with housekeeping, but this is the last day for our current Patreon, which is Rogue. So for 25 bucks, you will get these okay. guys. And uh, if you're watching this on the 1st okay. of August or later, August is Paladin Month, where you get lovely- Ooh, uh, August well, is you know, Paladin you your, Month. McCall, did you hear that? Sticker, and uh, yeah, that's what's going on there. It's exciting. Patreon's a massive help. And as you oh, just saw by us having job roles, Patreon really does make things go bigger here, and I yep. like we owe them so much for their support. So, with that, let's get into patch 8.2.5's development. Okay. So, Blizz posted the dev notes. Now, that means that we're not on the PTR just yet, but chances are PTR will be released tonight. So, expect a lot Ooh, of coverage over the next few days. Exciting. Especially based on, you know, if there's any spicy lore that the data miners end up getting. Now, this pretty much perfectly lines up with the predicted dates in my, uh, my next 12 months of Blizzard video that I did a few days ago, okay. so I'm feeling pretty good about our 8.2.5 okay. launch predictions, plus the other expansion dates in that video. Now, what's nice is that 8.2.5 seemingly has a few surprise features. So, Party Sync. This is a new game yeah, feature that the, I didn't know about this, trialing dude. in this PTR, and the goal is to help people play together. How does it work? Well, when players activate Party Sync, everyone in the party will be aligned to the same quest stage. And that this is good. Phases. This then is very good. Then when you over a quest, you can see where everyone in the party is in that quest and uh, if they're ready to turn in. And I imagine there'll be a sort of a nice spruced up new UI for that. Now, this is being complemented with a quest replay feature. This will allow players who've already completed a quest to replay the quest so they can yep. help their friend do the quest. Now, note that replaying a quest actually will get you rewards that are appropriate for your current level, regardless of the original level of the quest. Now this re This is good. This is good. This is good. It is good. I'm glad they're doing it. Because it is good. Really is quite the system. Replaying a quest, that's fairly interesting. As a yep. content creator, it could be dead handy for getting footage of iconic old quests. Yeah, it is, McConnell. Shut the fuck up. Well, why is it not good? Huh? Why is it not good? You said this is not good. Why is it not good? Just watch the video. I have my own opinions about things, okay? Yeah, why don't you tell me? It's none of your business! This is your stream! I'm afraid of being proven wrong. Best if we have the right setup. Uh, for people who are leveling with friends, it's going to be fantastic. Let's say you're 40 levels above your friend. Well, with yep. this feature, you'll be able to level together. If you don't even have a level gap, but you've just already completed a quest, well, you can re-clear a quest with your friend. That's a really great feature. That's good. This massively good. removes wrong barriers with that. that prevent people from feeling like they can play together. Yeah, and it it's means kind of annoying, you especially when you're phasing now. You're still getting a decent enough reward for your character. Yep. Right now, two of our artists over in the game studio they are leveling up in WoW right now, and I talked about Why? this feature to them. They're both really excited about it. So for endgame players, might not be great. For a, a, a silent, like, large number of players, this and Party Sync will be really quite massive. Now, sure, they're both rather odd gamey features. Uh, I think okay. they could work out really well for the modern game, though. I don't think these would be at all a good idea for WoW Classic, of course, but that's well, fine. Classic yeah, duh. exists in Classic yeah. and Modern WoW big are truly very different games. That's now, a big there true. are some other angles angles to this. So first, if you can replay quests, could you just not find the ideal set of like 12 quests in a particular zone and just grind them out again and again and yes. again? Well, from my read of Blizzard's post, you would actually need another player to be there who has not done the quest in order for you to be able to replay oh. it. And you couldn't progress in a quest That's actually... chain unless the other character is progressing like with the character you're trying to power that, level. That actually makes so sense. So in order to consistently complete the same quest hub over and over again, you need a constant supply of fresh characters at the right quest state and an 
appropriate level. So it probably wouldn't work. Wait, so couldn't you just start the quest with your friend and then you complete it and your friend abandons it? Then you do it again? Like, I, I'm pretty sure that's what would work, right? Yeah, you just abandon the quest. I, I mean, if, I, if we can figure out a way to manipulate this and take advantage of it, we're going to do it. All right, guys, keep that in mind. We do the actual beta testing here on my stream by figuring out every single dumb fucking way that we can take advantage of what Blizzard does, and then they have to slowly change it. Out for boosting, but still, being a system of this nature and wow, I'm pretty sure yep. some quirky situations will appear. We will. Okay, past that, they're also loosening up level restrictions when queuing for instance content with your friends, such that lower level players can queue up for content and have their higher level friends join them with the higher level people Can't wait being to do scaled dead down. Mines at 120. Now, Blizzard are initially going to implement this for dungeons and then for PvP instances. That's now, scaling the higher boy. level player down, that's extremely important. Yeah. It's basically the only way they can do this right because, yeah, it removes loads of abilities and okay. a lot of player power and yep. as much as having those things would be fun and really can make time walking a blast it would be just absurd for boosting characters boost leveling and i think it would upset the balance of how things mm -hmm. kind of should reasonably uh, reasonably be in the game that said yeah. if you want to see how crazy your power can go head into time walking with like your legion legendaries all your yep. bfa gear your yep. mob legendary cloak and yep. shadow mourn or something yep. and see how that goes it's pretty wild it's Over a good fucking time I don't see, like, I don't think this is a big deal, right? Like, why do people need to queue low-level instances with high-level characters? Like, I, I think Blizzard does so many things to allow players to play with each other. It just kind of ruins the experience of playing with each other. And I don't know. I think maybe this could be an example of that. Maybe not. It seems superfluous. It seems unnecessary. Uh, just have your friend level up to max level. It's not a big deal. Like, why would it even matter? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal at all. Uh, so Demon Hunter will have all the abilities at 70? I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. It, it just creates all these like weird questions and like things that they're trying to figure out. And I wish they'd just, fo just focus on making better high-end content. Like, just make better in-game content. Like, this is the thing. Like, nobody gives a fuck about this. Like, I mean, just make better high-end content. That's all you need to do. Although, I think this is a fantastic feature. If your newbie friend wants to run dead mines, you can go in there and be a tank and tank with Great. Them. This could really help experienced players onboard their friends and give them a real proper World of Warcraft gameplay experience, which is really great for how modern WoW was designed. Again, I don't think yeah. this would fit classic. I mean, it is the case that, yeah, if you can play with your existing friends, you don't need to make new friends. Now, that could be fine for getting your new friend to play Modern nah. WoW with you, nah. and because Modern WoW is not particularly good at naturally forming friends out of necessity in yep. the same way that Classic was able That's to. Very true. But in Classic, it is right that if you want to do Dead Mines, you should have to find other players in a similar situation to do it with, because that I think Bellier got a lot of accusations that people wanted the same changes in Classic WoW as they do in BFA. I mean, I don't think that, like, the, the okay, I can cube Deadmines at 15, like, I just feel like Blizzard, they're spending so much fucking time on doing this. Why don't you make another Mage Tower? Why don't you make a fucking dungeon? Why don't you do a better system with PvP gear? Why don't you do something that people fucking care about? And rather than try to focus and fixate on some dumbass bullshit that nobody gives a fuck about. Like, I, I want to see some new, better content rather than some other different way for me to do dead mines with my non-existent fucking friends. I clicked the wrong area. You don't need to make new friends. Now, that could be fine for there getting your new Sorry, friend to play it. Modern WoW with you, um, because Modern WoW is not particularly good at yep. naturally forming friends out of necessity in the same way that Classic was able to. But in Classic, it is right that if you want to do dead mines, you should have to find other players in a similar situation to do it with. Absolutely. Because that's just how the social bonds of that game work. Absolutely. Now, staying with the social theme of the 825 dev notes, I concur. Recruit a Friend is returning in this patch. So, this Liz is good. recently removed the system, and uh, this seeming this new one is their plan and it basically just seems to be old recruiter friend plus scroll of resurrection mixed together we don't have the details just yet but it just seems to be a more slick version of what you already know seemingly without the experience boost they did not mention that now experienced oh, yeah. players can recruit friends to the game using a shareable link that will connect you to each other and whenever the recruited player buys game that. time you will get rewards for each month they have game time you will earn pets mounts game time and more with the rewards unlocking per month 
and scaling with uh, how many months the other person has subscribed to the game for. Now, the specifics really do matter here, but it does seem to me that this could be potentially more rewarding over time, especially with the game time and, like, just, you know, d d do they run it for six months? And is that how long you get rewards for? It could be a lot more than the previous system. Now, here's a real tinfoil take. It could be because they want to sweeten the deal, because basically they know their business model doesn't really depend massively in subscriptions. It's more about things like the level boosts, the mounts, and the like, which is why... I don't even want to hear that. I don't even want to fucking hear that, but I think that it's probably true. I, I mean, the fact is that this shit happens all the fucking time. Like, I, I'm so goddamn sick of seeing this stupid-ass motherfucking bullshit. It drives me crazy. Like, I, I, I don't know why. It's just like the store mounts, like, the fact that they're trying to... Their model of making money is based off of selling microtransactions makes me fucking sick. The only good thing about this recruiter friend thing is this sentence right here. Uh, for each month you recruits have active game time, you'll earn a new reward such as unique pets, mounts, and game time, and more. So if I, if the, it's like a creator code, like with Fortnite or whatever, oh my fucking God, dude, we're going to farm the shit out of that. This is going to be heavily focused on mounts and pets and stuff yep. like that, but maybe you won't have experience and it's just about getting as many people yep. into the game as possible. I mean, that is basically what a recruit friend thing is going to be anyway. Now, as for the experience angle, well, they did not mention experience boost here. It would feel quite bad if the experience boost wasn't there. I think especially since WoW does have game features like the scaling and now with yep. Party Sync, where the experience boost wouldn't really lead to the, the problems of the old experience boost. Now, look, True. I loved getting mad RAF XP, and I was doing that, that multi-boxing awesome. back in the day. But I think it is also true that when you were doing that massively, you were out-leveling people, you were out-leveling zones. You got a very fractured, confused journey through Azeroth. Uh, but now that's not a problem, especially with things like party sync and quest replay. Wait, what the fuck, yo? They changed the they changed the thing on on Twitch. They changed the the, the look on it. They changed it to classic WoW, dude. Holy shit, man! It's happening, man. It is fucking happening. Look at that. They change it right. See, they, they already know what's going to happen. Like, as soon as Classic comes out, people are going to go crazy over it. That's your advertisement? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, if there's non experience boost element there, even just if it's 25, okay. 40%, it would feel pretty scummy. And then I suppose I'll ad lib in another tinfoil take here. Uh, what if 9.0 is doing the level squish? What if 9.0 has a bit of a world revamp or something like that? Oh. A new, uh, you know, new player experience. It would make a lot of sense that, is... that party sync quest replay and a revamp recruit That's a really good are point. all put I, I in place and are working well before yeah. that new thing happens. And maybe that's why, you know, Blizzard are doing this now, because they want to get a surge of new players in with that next expansion. Yeah, I agree If with it's that. going to have the level squish and maybe a revamped new player experience. Anyway, though, that's not all. We do have the 15th anniversary of World of Warcraft. This is included in this patch, and that pretty much confirms that this patch will be out before the 15th anniversary, which is uh, not okay. much of a surprise. And, uh, yeah, it does fit our predicted schedule for 8.3 coming out a little bit later. So, okay. in this, you'll be able to do three unique raids. They will feature old... Uh, nostalgic encounters. Seems pretty cool to be honest. We'll have to see what the specifics are. And that will get you the Obsidian Worldbreaker, which is a Deathwing inspired reskin. It's not a Deathwing inspired reskin. It's Deathwing. Like, that's Deathwing right there. That's Deathwing. Like, period. Like, I, I don't. I, I think that they're jumping the shark by allowing you to ride Deathwing. Okay? That's too much to me. It's too, it's, it's too much. You shouldn't be able to ride Deathwing. Like, just stop. Just fucking stop. In ...of the Storm Dragon model. It does look pretty darn cool, though. You're then going to be able to go back to an old-school-inspired Alteric Valley that will give oh. you an event currency that can be exchanged for either a Stormpike Battle Charger oh. or a Frostwolf Snarler. Now, I'm very interested by this. That's Note that good, it's dude. just giving you a currency that you can turn I'm into excited. those mounts. Now, the thing with old-school AV is that could last, like, 12-plus hours. So I You dumb motherfucker, stupid piece of shit in chat. What the fuck's your name? Ravage King 99 and riding Sindragosa is okay. No, you dumb fuck motherfucker. Because you're not riding Sindragosa, you're riding Sindragosa's kids. 
You're not riding Send Your Fucking Ghost. So look at it. It says Frost Brood Vanquisher. Brood. That doesn't mean it's the same fucking thing as Send Holy well, hold on, shit. He, he might respond. He might respond. Hold who on. cares? Let's he, well, let's see what he says. It's probably going to be something else stupid. It's a different thing. I wonder if it's not about winning old school AV, it's responding. just about queuing into not. it, going into an old school AV, and just Fuck participating stupid. in the battle. And if that's pretty much what they're what they're going with. And really, if doing it via currency system means that it can be old school AV that lasts for a very long time, I think that's really cool. Especially if they do put in a reward for staying there the whole distance and uh, being there to the bitter end and getting something. Then next up, Blizzard have announced Firelands Time Walking in 825. This is going to work just like right. Black Temple and right. Old War, so it'll be active during the Cata Time Walking week. But it's also an interesting lore opportunity. Uh, so here's the deal, right? So far, Ulduar and Black Temple have both been framed as us protecting the timelines against the infinite dragonflight. So in Black Temple, the quest text says that the infinites are trying to give Illidan a better Mardoom attack plan. Wait, seemingly what? one that would mean that the events at the start of the Legion expansion wouldn't have happened in that way. And then for Ulduar, the quest text says that the Titan locks have been aged by thousands of years. So seemingly that's about breaking... Uh, Yogs run out. That's so, not good. who knows what the infinite flight could actually be doing with the Firelands. Fuck. Next up, though, we've got bees. Yes, the bee mount will arrive in this patch. Alliance. I want to say one thing. People are, oh, but what about the Nixie mount? The Nixie mount is, it's a Nixie's brood. What is the difference between a Nixian mount and a Deathwing mount? Okay? It's the Elementium jaw. The Elementium jaw is not a biological trait of the drakes that are surrounding Deathwing. It is a specific trait to Deathwing. The Anixian brood mounts all have the exact same biological traits. And let me even go further than that. I don't think we should have had the Anixian mount either. I thought it was fucking stupid. The chest plate as well. It's the same fucking thing. We're riding Deathwing. It's too much, man. It's too fucking much. Riding Deathwing. Calm down. Players will get it by completing the quests from Barry the Beekeeper. This is perhaps going to be a bit like the Horde's uh, Direhorn training quest line, so that'll be a pretty cool thing to do when the patch comes out. And also on the topic of visuals, they did confirm that the Worgen oh, and great. Goblin revamp will arrive in this patch, which How? is exactly that, what we expected. Great. So far, that is it for the 8.2.5 news, though a whole lot more will be revealed once the data miners crack into the yep. initial build, which I do believe will be pushed to the servers this evening. But okay, let's move onwards to something completely different. The okay. race to world first, Ooh. Ashara is over with oh. Method getting their first place kill and Limit getting their second place kill, I believe about nine hours later. Though do Amazing. remember that Limit of course did have a head start because of the reset. True. And it was pretty cool as an event. The event itself set viewership records, at least True. for Method who did extremely well. Red True. Bull did struggle to keep up and that does make a lot of sense given the strength of Method's brand, them having more big name casting talent that's closer to the Mythic scene. Yep. And uh, well, quite simply, Method uh, seemingly we being a lot more popular than the other guilds. But that is something that yes. could change. So this has been a great event for Limit's exposure particularly. The, um, was it the Limit's GM? No, I forget who it was anyway. Limit were streaming, right? They were streaming yes. their raid perspective. And that stream actually beat Red Bull's stream. And that was especially interesting because they were streaming their ch uh, team chat, which, uh, yeah, was really enlightening as well. So that actually could set the stage for Limit having more of a, just more of a, like, position in the future, being a bit more known by people, having just, I, I guess, more fans. And what that could result in is the next race having a, having a better storyline to it, because Limit will be a bit larger. And I think that would be really healthy for the scene in terms of driving viewership and creating stories, but really, that is what- I should make a guild and go for world first next time. You know, like, you just get everything emailed to mention Max's views. He was counting those because he says limit, like, he says limit streams got more than, than Red Bull. Like, he's referring to Max's stream. I mean, clearly. Yeah, and, and I'll call it world last. Uh, I'll be, be, yeah, the pet battle gods. But no, I, I don't know, man. Like, I just, I, I hope he talks about the drama. You don't have the patience to go for real world first? Of course not. No, I'd, I'd rather do better things with my time. 
drives esports. Although still being real, I do care about World of Warcraft as an yep. MMORPG, not as an esports. So I, I think that's an important. Neither does Blizzard. That's why they've let Arena languish and fade into irrelevance by implementing features into the game and items into the game that make the matches boring and take forever. Also, they have not updated the format of PvP in a competitive environment in over 10 years. And because of that, players have gotten tired of it, and esports has evolved around Arena, and it is one of the few games that is still left in the team deathmatch scenario in a world full of BRs and variables. Blizzard has no idea what they're doing. Period. Like they, they don't know that they don't know how to make a good esports event. They just don't. If they did, the WoW PvP viewers would be more than ten thousand. The game is the game is boring. The events are boring. Uh, the content and the uh, there there's no player storylines. They never talk to the players. They want to do everything in a super stilted, stunted way that's left their viewership back in 2010 with probably even less than they had then. Like, they have no fucking idea what they're doing. They don't put enough money into it to encourage more people to compete. It's just... Listen. I've got some things coming, guys. I've been having meetings at night. Hours a day. We're going to fix this. We're, 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 we're going to solve this problem. All right? Might take a little bit of time, but we're going we're gonna to solve this problem. Disclaimer for me to give. Anyway, next, the Titan Residuum Lottery. Oh, this was strange. Blizz noticed that the Azerite shoulder tokens were not generating the mantles of ceremonial ascension and fastidious machinations. Now, this was fairly big because the cloth shoulders were incredibly strong for priests. Now, this led to Blizzard refunding priests, but very strangely, not refunding other people, even though it was, still was a pretty good item for many of them. Okay. According to GM Tickets, the dev team had decided on the priest refunds, and that seemingly is because it was BM, BIS uh, for the priests. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand the logic there, but this is perhaps why you don't have developers being involved in customer service decisions. A dev can be right, and, uh, you know, basically, in effect, be wrong. What okay. do I mean here? Well, the fact here is that for the same action, some players are getting refunds, other players are not getting refunds. Now, the dev team logic, it's just not that relevant in this very simple situation, and I think anyone who's ever dealt with CS knows the, just how this will make customers feel. The solution here is simple. If a refund is going out for the item, it should go out to everyone. Sure, the impacted items may not have been BIS for everyone, but in cases, you know, it was quite a good item. Now, if an above average quality item has been removed from the token and somebody purchased that token, then the average reward of that token would have been decreased. So by that logic, blanket refunds do make sense. Now, I've heard conflicted reports. I've seen um, like eight hours ago, people saying that GMs were not issuing refunds. Okay, let, let's talk about this real quick. So the fact is that in like both situations, there's positives and negatives, right? If you refund it to everyone, then you're going to have people that just didn't get their BIS and they weren't even trying to get the thing that wasn't even refunded. And now they're just rolling it again to try to take another shot at the lottery. And that kind of gives them a bit of an unfair advantage. And you're going to have other people, if they only refund at the priest, then the priests are getting a unique advantage too. Uh, Gretzky, thank you very much for the five of the community subs. Like, to me, I don't really care how they do it. It's such a minor issue. It doesn't really matter. Uh, one way or another, it's just whatever to me. Uh, Gretzky, thank you again for the five. Thank you. Thank you, man. Um, for the leather piece, I've seen some people say that they are. So right now, it seems like Blizzard don't have a clear policy. That's probably evolving. Overall, I do expect Blizzard will just come to their senses and do the right thing, though, which is 
to just refund everyone. So there you go, the post-PreachCon episode of the news. Big congratulations to my friend Tally Essen for getting his episode out on Monday. I stayed at PreachCon an extra night. I drank far That's too much. With the and five. I felt Thank you, man. Far too rough. Thank you very much. Weekend and Monday to uh, get the show out. That said, Monday night is when the PTR um, notes dropped, so it was pretty darn handy. Now, with that, if you're interested in working with us, be it remote, be it in person, specifically for our game industry news yeah. channel, our second channel, bellular.com forward slash jobs, link in the description below. Uh, yeah send us an application we'll see you know we'll see how it goes um there might be quite a few applications it'll probably take a bit of time to sift through but uh yeah you know as you can see we are um things are advancing a little bit we've had a lot of support from the belgian news patreon and that's really helping us get this role as well um and you know with even our sponsors like skillshare who like really do make a big difference both to this and also to our game development efforts so um i mean a big thank you to everyone for helping us out and you know, hopefully this is just the first of many more people who are coming onto this channel, or our channels, to help us produce more content. There Even for World of Warcraft, there are two series there that are is. going to take between one and two years uh, in terms of, like, their overall runtime that I think people are absolutely going to love that we've been working on for about four months now. And, yeah, we want to get one or two more people on board so we can actually make those things a reality. Uh, so between our sponsors and our patrons, you know, it does take quite a lot to actually get the extra people on board to make that amount Congrats, of content. Nick. But we could actually get there, which is really, really quite exciting indeed. And then I suppose on that, July is Rogue Month. So if you watch this video on the day of release and you still want the Rogue print, you can get that. And if you are watching this after, then you can also pick up at uh, next month's get the uh, print, which is the Paladin-themed one. And there again, we fucking go. Going back to those jobs, the people who support us in these, they really do help that happen. And uh, we should, uh, we should, we should subscribe to Bell. You're on Patreon, man. Uh, different stores are best off for their classes. There are less options and actually an advantage to their roles. Yeah, I mean, like, again, like, the, the, the thing with that is what I was saying before is that every, every direction they take it in, someone gains an unfair advantage. And it's just, it, it, the, the, the truth is, don't fuck up. That's the truth. 